Welcome to a very special Anne of the Week. As you may know, it is currently Worm Week, a completely made up week that we invented because for some reason a lot of you like worms, and I guess Worm Week is quite a catchy name. In this Anne of the Week, we will be looking at this rather horrifying worm. The piece of gold glittery nightmare fuel you've been looking at on your screen is called the Antarctic Scale Worm, an animal with the mouth of a xenomorph and the body of a microfiber mop. These worms are members of the family Polynodae, the family that is made up of all other scale worms. This also makes them polychaetes, the well-known class of annelids that contain such in famous worms as bobbit worms and Christmas tree worms, so the Antarctic scale worm is in good company. So where would a nightmarish demon worm like this live? Well of course it lives exactly where you'd expect such horrors to live, deep down in the frigid South Atlantic and Southern Ocean. You'll find these 20 centimeter long worms at depths of over 500 meters and down, so at least they are well hidden from the world. The problem with this cold, dark and remote habitat is that it means they are very hard to study. Though you may think that this is a good thing because who on earth would want to spend more time with a worm like this, it does mean that there is not a lot to go on when let's say perhaps making a video about them. It is currently unknown what these worms eat due to the previously mentioned difficulty in studying them, however all hope is not lost. As they are scale worms, it's safe to assume they eat similar things to other scale worms. This includes crustaceans, echinoderms, various zooplankton, and of course other scale worms. Perhaps one of the most interesting things about the Antarctic scale worm that we do know is the way in which it feeds. The head-like appendage that is seen in most images of the scale worm is actually normally hidden. This mouth folds into the main body of the worm, so most of the time all you see is the nice pretty golden body. When feeding, the head then strikes out of the body like a xenomorph from the Alien franchise. This in some ways makes the worm even more terrifying than before because you might not even realise what it is until it suddenly pops its head out. As you may well have guessed by now, we also don't know much about the worm's breeding behaviour, but we do know how many other species of scale worm breed, and so it's not unreasonable to assume the Antarctic scale worm breeding behaviour would be much the same. The problem is there are about four possibilities of how this may happen. Some worms are hermaphrodites, meaning they could release eggs and sperm at the same time to reproduce asexually. Many of these worms also have the ability to segment themselves and create new, smaller, genetically identical copies of themselves, again asexual reproduction. However, for most polychaetes are not hermaphrodites, which means the Antarctic scale worm might not reproduce in these ways. In the case of the worm not being a hermaphrodite, then it will either be a male or a female, and therefore one will release an egg into the water to be fertilised by the sperm released by the male. However, it's even possible for worms that are only male or only female to also be able to segment themselves and reproduce asexually. So essentially the Antarctic scale worm could be any of these options, and currently we don't know which. Well, we have already mentioned its specially adapted retractable head for eating, and its potential ability to segment itself, though that one is mainly guesswork. So what other adaptations does it possess? For one, its entire body, minus the head, is well adapted to swimming. The strange wrinkly skin segments with the golden bristles attached are perfectly adapted to allow the worm to paddle itself through the water. Really, other than its terrifying head and golden bristles, it's much like most other deep sea worms. So it has a list of more general adaptations, including the ability to survive in the deep ocean, survive without much light and survive in cold Antarctic oceans. Just like most sections of this video, we don't exactly know what threatens the species. We can assume from its physiology, mainly its giant scary mouth, that it is a predator and therefore higher up on the food chain. Other than this, we really can't say much. It could very easily be eaten by other larger creatures in the ocean depths, but we really don't know. We also don't know anything about their population size. It's probably safe to assume that they are largely safe from human activities, living in not only deep ocean, but also one of the most remote oceans, the Antarctic. At this sort of depth and remoteness, one of the few human things that could negatively influence them would be microplastics, however there is no evidence that this happens at all. So as for now, these scary little monsters are probably safe. Be sure to catch Ben's video on the origin of worms and prehistoric worm fossils tomorrow. My next video on Thursday will be about the world's weirdest worms. Thank you for watching this Worm Week video. If you would like to learn more about worms, their history and the wonderful worms that surround us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.